I can't claim that Vichy can cure cancer, but I do heard a lot of uh, testimonial. They do improve on their quality of life after they go for their chemotherapy. You know, after the side effect of chemotherapy, you make you lethargic, you make you uh, lazy and all this. But with Rishi, they will give them the energy that they need to continue living. Welcome to Fruiting Body Podcast with your host, Brendan. Today, we have an absolute legend of a guest. It is Liam Lee. Uh, he's coming from Singapore, but he is the mushroom lover. Today, on this episode, you're going to be learning about everything about mushrooms. He owns Mushroom World down in Chao Long. They're growing lion's mane, and he's brought some in today. So we're going to show you that. Talk about the growing uh, processes, uh, a little bit of mush mushroom teas, and the sustainability of the mushroom ecosystem. Uh, as we always do on The Fruiting Body, we will jump back into Liam's childhood and really piece that together. What brought him to Thailand? How did he get involved in mushrooms? To give you a little understanding of who we are, we are Fruiting Body Podcast. Fruiting Body, it's a medicinal mushroom company located on the island of Phuket. We're doing lion's mane, reishi, cordyceps, and a bunch of different mushroom complexes. Product coming out in a couple of weeks, uh, depending on when you see this. So you can go check that out at fruiting-body.com. Um, if you're tired of listening to me ramble, we got timestamps here. You can see different chapters of this podcast. Uh, so navigate through that and enjoy what you want to watch. Uh, final thing, do not forget to like, subscribe, and enjoy this comment. Leave uh, content, leave us comments, share with your friends and family, and let's get this podcast started. Without further ado, Liam Lee. Hi, Brendan. Hey, thanks hi, so much. Hi, everyone. Hey, everyone. Yeah, to the audience. Yeah. Hi, Ni hao. Sorry, we're shaking here. <laughs> um, so to the audience, I'm, I'm not going to use my, I've bored the audience to death with my horrible Chinese in the past, so we'll leave that alone. Um, maybe I'll pull some out a bit later. Um, first, thanks a lot for joining us today. Most now welcome. we're going to be quick, a uh, little tight on time. I think this podcast will probably be about 30 minutes. Uh, Liam's got clients coming at Mushroom World yes. Uh, yes, from the U.S., so right. some stuff to do there. But first, let's just jump right into it. Um, tell us about your childhood. You're from Singapore, Liam. Just take it away and tell us your story. Sure. Um, my childhood in Singapore is very interesting. We grow... During my generation, we grew up in a place where you see a lot of farm, nature, right? But how do I actually end up being a mushroom grower? It's because one of my friends actually brought me to one of the fruiting chamber in Thailand. And, and the moment I stepped into the mushroom chamber and I see the mushroom doing the work of sporulation, you know, when they start to emit a lot of spores, just like smoking a cigar, it fascinated me. And immediately I jumped back to Singapore and did a lot of deep research. And I get myself so interested that I did a lot of DIY. I start to grow my own grow kit. It grow mushroom, but it's ugly, you know. So it come to the point that, that I need to learn from someone. So in 2018, I spent almost a year learning from five teachers in Thailand, right? And once I get that, woke up paying the school fees, giving the free label and learning all the skills from them, what do I do next? The next natural thing to do is to set up a farm. And that is where I start to do my calculation in Singapore. I need to set up a farm. I need the land. I need this. I need that. At the end, my sum add up that I can't afford it. Mm. So what do I do? I come back to Phuket. I get the land from my friend and I jump into it and I started the whole mushroom work concept in 2019. Okay, so right up before, let's, uh, well, you know, YouTube doesn't like the word. We'll call it the, the situation. Yes. Yeah, YouTube might ban us. Anyways, um, so you, you started Mushroom World in 2019. Right. Um, after your education. Now, the education, was it done, it was done in Thailand, you're saying? Yes. At a university or just kind of through friends and people you connected with? In friends that I get to know them from Facebook, they own farms. They have their farms in Patutani, Nontomburi, Chomburi. So I got to learn how to grow edible mushroom, mm -hmm. medicinal mushroom. And um, one of those are cordyceps, which I maybe ex will be exploring later on. And with that skill, 
I start to grow edible mushroom in Phuket. Did you have the goal of like, for example, so, I mean, I guess we can show the audience now. You brought in some lion's mane? Yeah. Yeah, you can grab that. I did. And, and when you come back, sorry, I'll just help you out. You'll see yourself, when you come back to the mic, maybe just push it down a bit. This way later when we clip it, you won't have this mic in your face. Sure. Um, okay, so this is one of your, your products. Um, probably lean back a little bit just because this camera of the focus, okay. it will help it a bit. Um, and you can hold that up. You can see yourself there. Uh, just let us know oh, the substrate. Or actually, I'll let you handle that. Just walk us through the process of what goes into growing and getting it to the fruiting body of this lion's right. mane. Uh, before that, before that, we call this the lion's mane. But in our region, Southeast Asia, we are always call them the monkey head. Oh, I'll, I'll just interrupt quick because right. I forgot we also have an audio audience uh -huh, so uh, -huh. uh if you're listening on audio i highly recommend for this episode come over to youtube and watch it so you can see the visual but basically he's holding a substrate that's sawdust yes substrate of sawdust and the fruiting body of the lion's mane is on top uh -huh. and you'll explain that i'll right. say sorry continue so if you if you ever uh, uh wants to buy a lion's mane fresh there's one very important question you need to ask the seller the grower how does it look like when it start to pin, when it start to grow at the infancy stage, they should tell you that the color of that pin head is pink. Okay. And that is a sign of good health. And as they develop, they will grow into a monkey head. That's the, that's the reason why in this region, when we sell in Singapore, in Thailand, it's always look like the head of a monkey. But I would prefer lion's mane because of you can use lion's mane to do a lot of recipe. One of those is a replacement of shark fin. You know, lion's mane, they do have icicle. You see that their hair is pretty long. You can pluck them off and use it as a fin instead of a real shark fin. Mm. And Chinese eat that a lot. And we have been eating it and it tastes delicious. And we all know that lion's mane is an alternative meat replacement. Same texture. Same texture. You, you, you can literally feel that they are using it to do rendang. If you know rendang, the rendang is a Muslim, is a Malay word, word that they use it to cook to replace beef. Uh, yeah, ren rendang. Yeah, rendang. It's like uh, they do it in like red curries and stuff. Yes, yeah. yes. So that is what uh, uh, you can do as well. So there's many recipes you can make use of lion's mane. And this is one of those that we grow in Phuket, right? Now that process, um, would you walk us through if, if I'm learning to do, and I know we can't get this, so this is an episode on its own, sure. but uh, talk about the process. How do you prepare that sawdust substrate uh, initially? And, and maybe talk a little bit on your decisions of choosing sawdust maybe versus a, um, let's say a, a, a black rice uh, flour or powder. Sure. You know, if you are in Thailand, we always depend on what are the raw materials that we can find. And sawdust is a very abundant raw material. And if you're trying to use some other material, which is uh, coffee ground per se, they may not have that much for us to grow. So sawdust is a common commodity and it's plentiful in, in Thailand. And we use that to grow lion's mane. And it's a proven to be a very good substrate because lion's mane for this particular strain they do love to grow in this sawdust uh, base. And do you know the sawdust comes from which particular tree? Is it, are you using bamboo or no? Uh, no, it's from a rubber tree. Ah, we okay. do have a lot of rubber tree in Southeast Asia and Thailand have a lot too. So these are the uh, available raw material. Apart from the rest, we may not have a lot and we may not be easily uh, acquired and it can be expensive as well. Where are you sourcing? So I'm assuming the rubber, you're going to rubber tree plantations and we see them all over the island mm -hmm. um, where they're just older, they're not used anymore. Are there companies out there that, that this is their business, they're reselling the sawdust or just the lumber? And, and how did you go out to source that? Uh, we, we buy from an intermediary, the middleman, and they are mill, sawmill, who collect all the rubber tree and they would, they will sell it to the middleman and we we'll purchase from them and they bring it up to our farm. Uh, so this is how uh, we, we get it, uh, we, we get the sawdust from. And, and at the same time, uh, Mushroom Boy is a GAP. 
good agriculture practice farm. Yeah. So we need to get from approved source. So this is very important to begin with. Yeah, because uh, we're dealing with factories on right. this level, the GMP. Right. Uh, if they're not certified right. GMP, you right. can have issues with yes. um, you know qu- quality control side as well. Cool. Um, would you be able to walk us through the mushroom life cycle? Okay. As for lion's mane, you take a long time for them to be ready for growth. The moment they are ready for growth, you take them another 10 days where you start to see them growing slowly and you've got to give them a bit more time before it reaches the stage where we want them to be. If you're talking about lions... Uh, well, let, let's say like um, at the stage of inoculation and you're inoculating the spores, from there to the pin, how much time is that taking? 60 days. Eh? 60 days? Yeah, 60 Quite days. long. Yes. And from the pin to the fruiting body? I give you another three weeks. Oh, wow. And you can only fruit them two times. Per substrate? Per substrate. Okay. All right. So you only can do them two times and that's it. If you try to stretch them the third time, you may not have the quality lion's mane hit that you want. Right. Ah, okay. So you can see that the turnaround time of growing them is quite tedious and a lot of care as well as love. Right. Interesting. Well, I'll, and anyone out there... There's excellent infographics. If you just type in mush- mushroom life cycle, you can really see and yes. understand from uh, the mycelium, yes. the, well, the inoculation to the mycelium, to the pin, to the fruiting body. Yes. Now, we were chatting earlier about um, the potency and the power of mycelium. What are you going, what do you do with your substrates at the end? Uh, is, because it's on sawdust, you, you have to kind of throw them out or how does that work? Oh, we don't throw things away. We become sustainable. We will stretch them to grow second crop. Okay. You know the straw mushroom that is very popular in in Thailand, where they use it for tong yam. We we'll use the substrate like an oyster. Yeah, mm. we we'll use the substrate to grow straw mushroom. We will stretch them for second crop, and after we're done with straw mushroom, what do we do? We will grow vegetables, and once we are done with vegetable, we leave it back to the soil and let them rejuvenate. So all our agriculture waste will not go to waste. What type of vegetables are, are you growing off that like uh, third strain of uh, substrate? Morning gory and uh, chili. Mm-hmm. We haven't tried tomato yet. So these are some of those vegetables that we consume. We use it most often. Uh-huh. Now, th- these lion's mane here, now primarily so people can understand if they come down to mushroom world. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, again, the purpose of people going there, they want that experience. Yeah. Like you explained off the podcast, what are people doing in Thailand to grow lion's mane? Now, if they come down to Mushroom World, uh, like your clients today, mm-hmm. what is a typical day? What could they expect? Oh, they always end up very excited at the end of it because they want to see how does Thai people grow their mushroom. And when we show them the life cycle of growing mushroom right out from the tissue culture and, and present to them the equipment that we use to do the production, and we will share with them how we become uh, sustainable by using our ways to grow uh, those crops that I mentioned just now. And eventually, the main excitement is where they get to go into our fruiting chamber, see rows and rows of lion's mane, looking at them, waiting for them to be harvested by them. And they literally harvest it and bring it to our cafe. And uh, our chef will prepare right in front of them a fresh lion's mane burger. We call that monkey burger. Awesome. Yeah, I've, I've tried this before, but I cooked it with onion. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. Now, now, it was from a company in Chiang Mai. I'm not sure if they made it through uh-huh. the, that issue we had. Uh-huh. Um, I, a lot of these companies didn't. Um, but this product, yes, it, it has a very meaty texture yes, to yes, it. Yes. And it's filling. As right, well, and right. I was very, very surprised. Now, your guests that are coming through, mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. I also saw that you're doing some teas as well. Are you right. are you using lion mane in the tea, or are you doing it like a kombucha? Oh, oh very, Brayden, very good question. That comes to you can put that down. Right. Sorry, if you want. <laughs> We're holding it the whole. T- it's like a trophy, and right. Okay, this is what's going to happen. Now, this is uh, this is a rishi. Okay. Okay, this is rishi. Is right. it the same as the one we have here? up here right is it because now i talked uh, so i'll let before we go deep into that yes, yes. i talked to a lady in bangkok uh-huh, and uh-huh. she said in thailand they 
because well, I guess the Chinese or the other word for this is lingzhi. Yes, lingzhi. Okay. There's another type of strand. Yes. Strain yes. in in Bangkok yes. that is not reishi. Do you, I can't recall the name of it, but it looks very similar. I have to check it up on my phone. I see. Uh, are you familiar with this one? Uh, lingzhi got many strains. Okay. Uh, a little bit about their pot- botanical name. Ganoderma lucidum mm. is the name of this species, and Ganoderma they have many type of species. And and the one that we grow commonly in Thailand is this one, and um, in China they call this lingzhi, mm. in Japan they call it rishi, so so you can you can call them rishi or lingzhi, but they come to the same thing, but most importantly, why are we having the rishi that is different from the one, in terms of the shape, in terms of the color, is because there are very important information that we like to share. In order to have a very good piece of rishi, you need to highlight or observe three parts of it. First is the fruiting body. As you can see, this is how the rishi will look like a fan shape. And this is one of the most common and important potent part of the lingzhi. At the same time, the stalk. This stalk may look nothing to many of us, but it's actually the second most potent part of the lingzhi. And it's called germanium, and germanium is discovered by a lady from German, and that is her name, germanium, mm. right? And you can see that it's not glossy looking. In fact, it's chocolate looking. And if you do stroke it on the surface, you see spores are sticking on your finger. And we are giving the three most important part of the lingzhi to you, mm. so that you have the best of the whole world, right? A sh- fruiting body. Germanium and the layer of spores, and you'll do that in a tea, and we do that in the tea, um, and we do that in kombucha as well. Can Ishi you kombucha. explain um, a lot of the stuff I'm familiar, but right. I want you, I want you to run with that content on this one. Right. Um, explain a little bit about the different extract processes for, let's say, reishi, because it's a it's a hard shell, it's a conch, and to actually get the benefits out of it, what processes do you need okay. to use? Personally. I would rather have it fresh harvestly into my pot. You get the best of it, as in boil, you, boiling water. Right, yeah. and you do the liquid extract and drink it as a form of tea. But in our current environment, people want it fast and you want it taste tasty and don't want so much of a bitterness. So we do an extract where you use all the machinery mm-hmm. to <clears throat> to get the liquid. And change them into powder later, and we put them into coffee. That's why we do have a Rishi World Coffee mm-hmm. for easy and good taste consumption. You can't grind them to be a powder because they are polypores, so they will become granular, yep. and you can't be even consumed. But having said that, the spores, the spores, if you were to collect them, and if you were to drink it. After you have collected it, it got to give you the immediate effect. A couple hours later, and I did that. And once I drink it, I feel my blood become boiling, so to speak, and feverish. And I recall it's because I drank the spores in the morning. Okay. And what what do we do in Singapore? There are companies who actually collect the spores, crack the spores through a machine, and sell it for a couple hundreds. At least three to four hundred dollars in the capsule form, and spores is one of those that is the best among all the lingzhi. All right, so this is how we can do it. But if you ask me, Brandon, mm. have this today, boil it for thirty minutes, and share with your wife. You can drink this for seven days. Yeah, and people people need to understand it doesn't taste great. It's yes. very bitter. <laughs> yes, very bitter. Well, what are the benefits? Oh. It has been mentioned in studies that it can mitigate cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, right? And sorry, uh, if you don't like bitterness so much, you can always add some red dates, blueberries, mm-hmm. and even natural honey, and and you get that taste that you want. Yeah, it's right. bitter. It's not that. It's kind of reminds me of you know Chinese medicine, the dark one. Right. You right. drink this, and it's it's. It's kind of it's bitter like that, but it's not that bad. It's right. not like uh, you know undesirable. 
on, on this reishi mushroom itself, mm. uh, we, we're as well, when we're going to be doing our product, yes. we're going to be using uh, an extract and actually s- crack spores as well. Um, as, as yourself from Singapore um, right. and understanding Chinese medicinal medicine, it, would you consider this true or false? Is no, is reishi not not only the number one in all of China, Singapore, between the Chinese, of let's say a, a medicinal herb, mm. but like number one of all Chinese medicine? Mm-hmm. Is it considered this? I would say they are well, very well known. Mm. That's the reason why when I start to grow mushroom, I got to grow something that majority of people can recognize. You know, so if I would grow something like chaga, for example. You may know what is chaga. Yep. I understand what is chaga, but the majority may need me to explain what is chaga. By the time I finish explaining, they will be too tired to continue the conversation. Yeah. So let, let, let me do the rishi first. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So when I, when I give it to the, to the consumer, immediately the impression they have for rishi <laughs> is two things. Very good, expensive stuff and trustworthy. And it has been positive all the way. Yeah, because it can get, I mean, if you're getting pure crack spores, yes, this stuff is extremely expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. I was told, I was told, if you want one kilo of spores, you need to go 5,000 of this bag yeah. to collect one kilo of spores. Yeah. I've not tried that. <laughs> I'm not going to try it. But I just claw it for my own consumption. Now, you're growing reishi at your farm as well? Uh, not for this cycle. The previous cycle, we do. Uh, my understanding as well, their climate's also an issue, especially yes. for naturally reishi grows better in colder climates. So how do you deal with that? Oh, one thing we don't know is that the strain that we are growing in Thailand are acclimatized to the weather here. Ah, okay. So if you were to use this strain to grow in somewhere where you have the four seasons, they may not do very well, vice versa. So what you see here, the lion's mane and the reishi strain, they have actually acclimatized to the tropic region where you can literally grow them under a controlled environment setting, but not has, has a, a, a difficult uh, per se to, to get it to, to it's, grow It's it. still semi-outdoor, your environment? Uh, or? No, fully controlled. Uh, fully when I started, contro- yeah, when I started, I do it outdoor and yeah. I have a bit of issue with the element, you know, with the element. So I do it close uh, indoor now. And I have it set up so that I don't have to manage it too much manually. Yeah, because I can imagine Thailand with the humidity and yes. the temperature change. Yes. I mean, it must yes. be quite difficult to right. manage. Um, let's Going back to lion's mane, mm. uh, we forgot to touch on one point. Can you explain the benefits of lion's mane? Oh. Lion's mane benefit basically is to mitigate dementia. You know, lion's mane, there are two biomedical compounds that we need to understand. Have you seen one? and everything since. They are the one that will boost our nerve uh, uh, nerve growth factor. Correct, NGF, right. yeah. Nerve NGF, uh. and without them, we, we will not be having the best part of the lion's mane anymore. We need them because we need them to boost our brain cell, all right? Are there other, mm, uh, like food, because uh, I, People need to understand the product you're doing. You're doing it as as food, and sometimes the supplement world and the food world they battle. They say, "Well, you can get it from food, and you can get it from supplements." I, I'm kind of in the middle. I think you can go either way. Sometimes we don't have time to eat lion's mane every day. Yes. So supplement, no problem. Now, on the benefits of let's say battling things like dementia, is there anything else in the world out there that can you know protect you from Alzheimer's and, and dementia at the level that lion's mane can? Mm. that you're aware of? I'm not aware of, but I surely do. There are, there are others that can also help, not only just lion's mane. So, so maybe there's some, some part that Ling Chu will also function that way, but it's just that the, they are not the main primary role that they're going to play as compared to lion's mane. But uh, coming back to the previous uh, question that you have, that lion's mane, to begin with, they are classified under as a medicinal mushroom. But because lion's mane can be eaten as a food, they also said to more as an edible mushroom rather mm. than a medicinal mushroom. Just imagine if reishi mm. can be eaten 
you will no longer be a medicinal mushroom. You become an edible mushroom. Can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah, if you could eat it. Well, that's what's great, why we can put it in, in teas and whatnot. Right, and I kind of right. like, there's a company out there, and I, I love to talk about them. I, I, in the mushroom world, I, and as I'm getting into it, I don't yes. believe in competitors. Yes. And everyone can attach themselves right. to brands that they connect with. And the company we discussed is uh, Fresh Caps, and the owner's Tony. Yes, yes. And I really like the way he brands his mushrooms. He doesn't call them medicinal. He calls them functional. Wow, and yes. I, I like the way to change that, because I find in today's world the word medicinal it implies a medicine and it applies i have a problem yes and yes, i need to fix yes, it yes. and i don't i don't like that i i find you know these products are here to supplement us they were mm-hmm. put on this earth to support us and lion's mane as well it, it can it i've read there's paper papers out there it's actually more in china you're not going to find them too much in the u.s and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for certain reasons by big pharma but China, there are papers out there, and it battles dementia by 60 to 80 percent. And my grandfather had Alzheimer's, and that's kind of what led me to the, towards this. When you found out that lion's mane can cure, you know, Alzheimer's and dementia, mm-hmm. do you have any history of that in your family? Did it touch home back to you, knowing that this can be something that can help? Um, I don't have a history of uh, my family downstream that are suffering from dementia. But we do have history of cancer. Okay. So my dad passed away because of cancer, and and because of that, I'm very aware that I must I must not have that as well. So what I did was I drank the first harvest of my lingzi until today, mm-hmm. and also because I work hard at the farm, I need the energy booster that I need from lingzi. So that part, I'm pretty sure I'm okay. But um, for as for dementia, as for dementia. I do not have direct uh, 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 outcome results because right now we are just started growing mm-hmm. them this year. But let's see. Let's find out. Are, right? How often are you taking mushroom? Are you drinking linja every day? Or? Every morning. Every morning. Uh, we drink every morning. Uh, to me, it's before breakfast so that I have it empty stomach. But you can always do it after that. Uh, just half a glass, warm, will do. Uh, don't drink anything more than that. You're, sorry, you're doing on an empty stomach or? I do it on, on an, an empty, empty stomach, right. How many, okay, so if we're coming to Mushroom World and we mm. want like, you know, a, a month's supply of reishi that I can use in my tea every sure. morning, how much, how many grams should I be purchasing to be um, able to last me a month? About a kilo. About a kilo? A kilo will do. Fresh, and, fresh uh, uh, reishi. And this, I mean, I guess you can show the audience this reishi fruiting body. Um, of the, uh, say, a, reishi, a fruiting body of reishi this yes. size in the morning, mm-hmm. like, what would you say that weighs? 10 grams? Uh, he would say that this is about 20 grams. 20 grams. Uh, how 20 gram? Of that, how much should go into my morning tea? Oh, um, I bring you through the steps. A piece of this size, you drop it in, pour a liter of water, uh, one liter of water, Brew it for 30 minutes and it will good enough to serve you about 30 ml of water, of liquid, a lingzi. You have it for the next couple of days before you add more water and reboil them again for the next four to five days before you change a new one. Okay. Uh, we do have a recipe. We do have a recipe uh, uh, where they can, they can uh, take reference from to, you know, to prepare mm-hmm. it. Right. So they will show them the step by step of and how to do it. Your clients, they're coming from all over the world. Right. They got to go back home. They purchase the reishi off for yes. you. There's no issues flying back home with this product. Uh, frame. Yeah. Just so people, it's more so people can understand that when they're coming and they're getting reishi mm. at your farm or lion's mane, if they're flying back to us, Canada, Europe, they're able to bring it on the plane. Definitely. Yeah. Because this is a fresh produce. Yes. If they were to buy our reishi coffee, it has been certified. GMP with a food code, everything is done uh, in accordance with the agriculture uh, uh, practice. As for the fresh uh, rishi, it's a fresh produce. As long as it's dehydrated, there's no contamination, it's good to go. It's Perfect. good to go. Um, just a quick shout out to uh, Five Star Marine. Five Star Marine has been helping uh, support this podcast. They're basically just kind of uh, covering our bills so we can operate and I'm not out of pocket every other month, but go check them out. They are a, uh, it, it's like a VIP, uh, speedboat tour company on the Island of Phuket. 
Um, they're doing some great stuff. If you don't want to deal, you know, with the typical salesmen selling you speed boats and taking you to where you don't want to go, these guys are the ones that are going to give you that private tour. So links in the description. Check that out. Yeah, it's, it's interesting before you're mentioning, I didn't realize the word Raishi was a Japanese word. Yeah, he's a Japanese um, word. But I've told this story on the podcast before that Raishi was actually used in Japan to cure cancer until about the 1950s mm -hmm. when chemotherapy and big pharmaceutical companies co came in. Uh, we talked about that before a little bit earlier. What are your thoughts and opinions on that? Like, I mean, this is uh, a power food. Mushrooms are a super power food. Why doesn't more of the world know about this? Um, I can't claim that Rishi can cure cancer, but I do heard a lot of uh, testimonia that they do improve on their quality of life after they go for their chemotherapy. You know, after the side effect of chemotherapy, you make you lethargic, you make you uh, lazy and all this. But with Rishi, they will give them the energy that they need to continue living. But there are evidence, there are testimonials to say that there are people who take high dosage of Ling Tzu and they are cured of cancer. I have not seen the real case yet, but I have heard story, I have read about it, but I can't claim that it does, right? But what I do know for myself, it, gi it will give me two things, sorry, three. The effect on me drinking Rishi is that I sleep well, I detox well, and I got lots of energy for my farm work. That is my benefit. Mm -hmm. But it may be different from you, Brenda. It may be different from him. It may be different from many other people. So it's all depending on how our body will react to it. But again, having said that, there's always a cap of consuming mushroom. If a senior's above 60 years and above, and young toddler never consume more than 500 grams of mushroom per day, which we will not do that. That's a right? lot. Yeah. We should not do that. Mm. But having said that, there are people who thought that if this is going to help in my dementia, let's do a kilo a day. No, you don't mm. do that. You're going to hurt your liver. You're going to hurt your kidney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, I mean, you can overdose on anything right, in this right. world. And people, mm. you know, you have to find that mm. balance. There's a doctor, um, a medicinal mushroom doctor out of the UK now called Martin Powell. I have his yes. book downstairs. Excellent book, and mm. he was explaining as well that there's different dosages, I guess, yes. with reishi. So, for example, like mate, we'll call it maintenance. Okay, yes. extract powder, a ten to one extract, one gram a day. Mm. That's fine. But when you're really trying to, you know, maybe you you do have cancer, and you're trying to uh, use that as an alternative instead of chemotherapy, he said you need to be taking like twenty to one extract yes. with crack powder, uh, crack spores, and yes. taking like three to five grams a day. Yes. That would be the, like, you know, you're trying to cure something. Yes. That's, that's that yes. uh, uh, dosage. Yes. But people need to understand that's very expensive. Right. Like, so, but, uh, I mean, it's the, the alternative. Do you want, you know, new age medicine or, or Chinese medicine? A every time I hear that as well, I always wonder, when they call... Let's call it Asian medicine, South mm. Asian, me Chinese medicine, whatever. They call it alternative medicine. Yes, alternative medicine. But it, I, I actually look at the other medicine as alternative. This stuff, so the chemical's only been around 100 years. So why did this medicine that we've been using for 5,000 years all of a sudden become the alternative? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense to me. Um, Maybe it's from, it because it's natural? Oh, well, I mean, if you go back 100 years ago, mm -hmm. There was no other medicine. Right, this right. was it. <laughs> there wasn't an alternative. You you had you only had this type of stuff. And I mean, me living in China, this is you go to the medicine doctors, you see this, and it gives you options. You, you know what, Brendan? What is going to happen next month? Mm. We have we have set up a thera therapeutic massage center where we're going to have our Rishi extract oil and our lion's mate extract oil for the application. Are you making the oil at the facility? Uh, no. Uh, okay. we, we don't have the facility. Yeah. We get it done somewhere else. Yeah. But we're going to use the final product for our uh, therapeutic massage center where we use it on the for the customer. right? Because sometimes they may not want to consume it, but they don't mind to have it on their body and rub into it's it. It's like a topical yes. uh, oil yes. of reishi. Right. Interesting. Reishi, lion's mane, 
and um, we will top it on if they are okay with uh, lion's mane kombucha and rishi kombucha you will serve it to them as well when uh, people come where now you're in Cha Long um, mm. specifically where in Cha Long uh, Soi Kung Nyam uh, is it uh, you know there's a there's a lotus there okay uh, just beside lotus uh, so that that street is called Soi Kung Nyam Okay, and uh, every th- your your farm there. I I haven't had time yet to come visit sure. down. Please do. Uh, thanks to uh, all the the tourist traffic, yeah. is uh, <laughs> it's pretty backed up right now. Right. But I'll I'll try to make my way down. But you're, you're I think you said you're going back. Yes, um, I'm going back uh, anytime soon. How often are you coming back and forth? Um, most probably uh, once every month. Once I try month? to. I try and to you stay for like a week or so. Yeah, but uh, this time around may be a bit longer uh, because I need to set up a farm in Singapore. And so also, you probably, I think Chinese New Year, do you celebrate? Sh- yeah, we do. Xin Nian Kuai La. Xin Nian Kuai Hong Bao, Hong Bao Na Lai. Yeah, I'll give you the Hong Bao next time. <laughs> it's um for, uh, I think, what when is China New Year this 22. year? 22. 22, right? Yeah, January 22. 22. January. Yeah, right. Yeah, I thought and, it was a bit earlier. And, and from there, the whole stretch, I'll be very busy because we have just uh, got a piece of land. We're going to set up a farm. So we need a lot of uh, work to be done. Uh, is this in the same area as your shop, the the the, fa- the land as well? I uh, know, uh, in Singapore. Ah, it's in Singapore. Yeah, Singapore, we're going to set up a farm in Singapore. Ah, okay. We have this in Phuket, and we're going to integrate our academy as one so that we, we can facilitate a local training, a localized training, as well as uh, internship overseas and vice versa. Okay, ah. now you're talking about, um, it, it was funny because I reached out to Jamie Raffertree mm. and he was on the podcast before. Yes, yes. I actually asked him, I said, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, doing a mushroom cooking like series. Kind of an I- my idea is I would come great, to his facility. Great, great. We, we could cook your lion's mane. Yeah, we could all wonderful. collaborate yes, together. Yes, yes, yes. And then I would release this as the content, right, um, right. which is good for the website. You know, hey, this is how you cook lion's mane and, and whatnot. And then he said, oh, he's working with you. I said, all right, Liam's coming on in two <laughs> days. Very small world. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you're doing with Jamie? Oh, um, Jamie, th- um, we have get in touch, I think, uh, last quarter of 20, 2022. And um, and they come on board on our this uh, we grow you harvest lion's mane program, so uh, they subscribe to our this program, and we have been supplying them fresh lion's mane, uh, uh, and and send it over to their cafe, and they 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 have it cooked f- uh, fresh for the client, uh, so we have we have started that program already, mm-hmm. so right now after s- knowing that he's throwing some classes uh, culinary classes, and and I think why not we we also integrate a farm kind of setting where where they where the student can come and have a visit and we can do that vice versa as well no yeah i uh, think that works very very well i mean at the end of the day uh, tourism thailand it's not always just about making right. money it's also right. about the experience education, and yes, education experience, yes. and that's that's great you you're at Jamie's facility he's yes. giving you a cooking class on the lion's mane let's right. say right. and if any of the the, the clients or the students are also interested. Okay, let's go look at the sustainable right, practice right. of where this lion's mane come to. That connects very well. You know, Brendan, um, the key takeaway from many of our visitors is that when they consume our m- mushroom burger, they immediately dawn on them that this is the food source. This is traceability. And this is where the lion's mane is grown. So they don't have to speculate where did my food come from? Can it be here and there? No. It does right in front of you from Chalong, Mushroom World. Uh, and there's no, obviously, because it's controlled environment, there's no pesticides. There's no, you're not going to have any issues with the high, high mercury levels. No. We, don't, we don't believe in uh, uh, using a chemical to kill off the pesticide. We do send our product for lab tests yep. because we, anything that we're going to do it overseas, we, we get a lab report. To make sure there's no mercury content too much, everything uh, has what is required. Yeah. And and again, t- um, I always share with our guests, our customer, how do we define freshness? The definition of freshness does not mean that we put on the shelving, waiting for people to buy. It's not canned; it's fresh. Yes, they are fresh, but the definition of freshness to me is the day which you're going to harvest this later. It's the day of freshness. So, yeah. Brendan, you're going to eat a lion's mane that is born today. 
Can you imagine that? That is freshness, absolutely freshness. And I think there's a misunderstanding uh, uh, about mushrooms that I think a lot of people make. Uh-huh. Um, how important is it? You have to cook mushrooms. Do not, you're, I, meaning like when you're taking mushrooms like lion's mane, mm. it needs to be cooked. Oh. And I think a lot of people make this mistake. I've watched friends, they put raw, even like a button mushroom, mm-hmm. and they put raw on the salad. I explain, no, 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 no. You need to cook the mushroom. Every, and people, like, this is very important. Every mushroom in the world, you have to cook it. Can you explain why that is? Uh, what I do know is that they do have certain compound that need to go over the stove yeah. and, 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 and get, get rid of. But there are studies being done to, to, to mention about this in much detail. But my belief, you can't do that like sashimi, eat raw. You have to cook it. You have Whether to. we like it or not, you got to cook it. But there are certain type of mushroom that is less risky uh, instead of getting a, a bad stomach upset. That could be a coli, like things yes. like that. Yeah. So all these are something whereby it's quite common, even in vegetables. So there are certain vegetables, even you don't cook it, they soak it in certain solution to mitigate it. And then you eat it fresh, right? But generally, anything that is raw, especially mushroom, you got to cook it. Eh? You definitely have to cook yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's very right. important. Let me ask you e. something, e. Coli, sorry. E. coli very, very serious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. William, sorry. And about those mushrooms that you buy uh, at the supermarket, that they come in the canes, like, do, they, do you have to cook them as well or do they have no, benefits th- as I, well? I sorry <laughs> about that, but just, you know, like... It's, uh, I think it's uh, like canned mushroom. They already yes. been pressurized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even they already gone through the pressurizing uh, 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 process. But do they keep the same the same uh, capacity of benefit you when you eat them as? I think well, there's probably a lot of preserve it, a lot of sodium. It. Sodium. Uh, yeah. So I would say that you want the best of the best. Eat it fresh from farm to table concept. That is always the best. That's the reason why. If you ask me, how would you consume rishi? I'd rather have it like this put a little bit of effort, boil it, and, and extract the juice from it. That's all. Yeah. But because of our culture, because of convenience, because of good taste, we have no choice but to do it in a coffee way. Right? Uh, and, and if you ask me how, how effective it is, it's effective, but not as, as effective as taking it fresh. I, I, I Especially holding that bo- potency as well. Yes. I mean, you see a lot of these companies like Four Sigmatic, and they kind of, they'll sell you... Uh, like a little satchel, and it will have, I don't know, a gram of reishi and then coffee in it as mm, well. Mm. But it's the reality is you're not getting the best coffee and you're not getting the best mushroom. So what, what, what is the purpose here? And, and who knows what they're using as well. Um, before we let you go, because you got to get running down back, you got customers arri- arriving. Yes. You're talking about you might be getting in gro- into growing cordyceps. Yes. Can yes. you talk just a little bit about the ecosystem of cordyceps, maybe some of the challenges growing it, and also the benefits of the product itself? Uh, I, I study cordyceps, but I have not practiced it. So most probably I'm a bit rusty now. But I do know that cordyceps growing technique is different from serifaxic growing technique using sawdust. And also, they do need a very cold, uh, reasonable cold environment, and they need certain element of lights. And the benefit of cordyceps, um, the one that we grow, which is the golden cordy, is cordyceps miniaturis. You can see them in the wild as well. But the good stuff, which is what you call the most expensive one, is the cordyceps synthesis. But there are studies, uh, I came across paper uh, done uh, by certain researcher that whatever you cannot find in synthesis, you can find them in miniaturis, the one that men can grow. Can you imagine that? But having said that, the one that sell the most expensive one are the one from the wild. Yeah, these are the... Um, <laughs> Supply and, and demand and, and issue. To, let's, I'll explain. So the, the Cordyceps Militaris, some people call it alien Cheetos. It, lo- <laughs> it looks like a, if you're American, I guess you would know it's like a, a type of fast f- uh, chip. It uh-huh. looks like a Cheeto, you know, okay, the okay. Chester Cheeto guy. Okay. There are these orange fingerly yes, looking yes. things. And the Cordyceps sinensis, mm. um, this is essentially, it's a, a bug or a grub. Yes. And the, yes. the, the Cordyceps, the mushroom, infiltrates it and grows yes, out of it. Yes. Can they you explain that a bit? Okay. Um, there are three categories of mushroom. One is a seraphosid where you use decay matters. Right, which is sawdust. 
The other one is the parasite, where we just mentioned just now. They need to survive and grow from a host, which is an insect. And that he insects up, uh, and, and and the one that you normally have, find them in Nepal or the Himalayas. Bhutan. Yes, and those are those uh, expensive one, but we do find them in the nature as well, where you simply can grow on any type of insects. But whether can you consume them, I do not know. Uh, but having s- again, they need that kind of uh, hosting environment to do it. But for cordyceps meteoris, you can create a medium with a proper nutrients and put in the the cell, and they can they can they can grow. They can grow quite easily. And this uh, is mostly for energy. That's the benefit, right? Uh, there are many claims. Uh, they 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 will want to see it as an immunity booster. They want to see it as an energy giver. They also want to see it as a form of uh, uh, mitigating certain problems in the in, in in the system, right? But I look at it this way. We take it as a uh, we take it with an open mind, as a form of supplement. And not overly, uh, overly depending on this to solve a problem, which is not fair to the rest of the supplement out there. Yeah, and it's like you're saying, mushrooms react to everybody differently. Right. I think when you're getting into the world of mushrooms, you need to experiment on yourself. Yes, and because so, some people I know, my mom, she had uh, breast cancer and she was taking reishi, and some people mushrooms they upset their stomach. Like reishi, my mom's like, oh, I don't know, it hurts. And I've read on uh, many um, like reviews, some people like the reishi mushroom it just doesn't work for their stomach and there's not much you can do, right? You know, if you take something that is new, where you introduce into your system, there were this vertical reaction, which I think you've come across before, that your body will try to react and try to resist. But after, that is a good sign because it does demonstrate that we do have some issue here. For example, I give you my, my case study. When I have this, I visit the restroom very often. And I, it doesn't happen to me very often. But because of this, it makes me do so. Because there's a reaction here. But after that, everything cleared, it back to normal. Mm. And I do it as a form of maintenance. As a form of maintenance. Do you know... I me- just now we were mentioning about seeing some land at Talang, right? Mm. You know truffle? No. Truffle is... Truffle. Tru- uh, truffle yes, is a, a mushroom, a tuber, that as far as I do know, it can't be cultured by man yet, right? Right. So I'm looking at Talang. Is there a possibility whereby we have the right piece of land with the right pH, bring in the oak tree that later on we will inoculate with the trophus uh, uh, mycelium and let them s- survive and grow there. But we need to wait for seven years to see that happen. Yeah. <laughs> but having said that, is our environment ready for it? Right. Mm. So trophus is one of the symbiotic, symbiotic fungi that live very happily with the oak tree with them because yeah. they connect with each other they help each other. They are friendly together. And that is the kind of mushroom that we will also want to want to promote. For, and for your, your own right. health as well. Right. I mean, it's, that's, that's the interesting part about mushrooms. People don't understand um, or that maybe they haven't seen that actually our relationship with mushrooms, our genetic buildup is closer to a mushroom than it is to a, a plant. We are more connected, like from, let's say, the genetic tree of life. Yes. You know the movie Avatar? Yes, Avatar, yeah. Yeah. The Avatar, you see the first first uh, movie, the part one. You see a lot of uh, mycelium. Mm. They actually demonstrated mm-hmm. the, the, the network of mycelium. But the second part of the movie, which is the latest one, the first scene you're going to see are mushrooms at the b- at, uh, hanging at the bark of the tree. So you see, mushroom mycelium are everywhere. It's just that we never see them. When the moment is right, after a shower, you go for your nature walk, you see the mushroom popping just right in front of you. And that's where you start to forage for them. 
Yeah, and especially you know, Thailand, you'll start to see them grow more yes. around May after the after the next the first yes. big rainfall. Yes. You'll yes. you'll see the mushrooms all over. I'll see them on the golf course all the time. See, it's so fortunate that some of them who can ID the good one. They actually went in and harvest them for food, mm-hmm. right? So Phuket do have that kind of uh, uh, sustainable supply of wild mushroom. It's just that you need to know how to identify the poisonous one <laughs> and the non. Yeah, do not one. just go eat mushrooms yes, out of the please, field. Please don't. I've please seen don't. some in the field. I've seen the they're the white ones. Oh my, about this big. The cap's about that big. Muff, uh, what do you call a puff ball? No, oh, no, I don't know the name. It's a poisonous one because I can tell. Usually, when you flip the cap, if yes, the spores yes, are yes. very white, yes, for sure. Yeah, and actually, you shouldn't even touch these. Um, I, I've, I've still want to understand though, and I don't, I don't have the answer, and I haven't mm. done enough research. Um, these poisonous ones, like, what role do they play in the uh, ecosystem? I think they do play their own role, a nature role, where they rejuvenate the soil. Mm. They they break down the nutrients where the tree and plants can absorb, so they do have a role to play. Um, it's just that we need to understand them more, whether is it poisonous or not. As long we are not sure, we better not touch and eat them. Yeah, right? yeah especially touching because you could touch them and touch your eye. You don't know. <laughs> no, it's it, it, I I heard that it it can be quite dangerous. But do you know, rishi? Yeah, most of the rishi in the wild can be eaten. Yeah, you see. A lot of similar um, reishi growing on trees, yes. but it's uh, sorry, not even. I, I think it more looks more similar to turkey tail. Turkey tail is one of those. Yeah, I see. Right. You see them all over yes, Thailand, yes. and you'll see the turkey tail growing on a lot of trees. Would right. you say in general this is quite safe? Uh, like, could you pick that, take it home, boil it, and drink it? I I tried that. Uh. <laughs> I what? tried that in Singapore. It was okay. Uh, if okay, when you do a small amount. I don't feel anything. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know it's, but you never you never know it. I think this is the number one you're gonna see on any hiking trail. Right. right. You're gonna see this turkey tail. It's much different than this. Mm. Um, it's not as hard. Right. It's still a hard flimsy. Tr- flimsy. Yeah. Yes, flimsy, and they are bits. They, they are thinner. Yeah. They are, they are but thinner. there's probably so many strains and species yes, of plen- turkey tail of it. itself. Mm. And that one in particular, turkey tail, I, I hear is one of the best for fighting cancer. Uh, I yeah I yeah. I think I think most of the polypores, uh uh, uh species mm. they are very good at that. Yeah. They are very good at that. Are right. you? Um, uh, sorry, well, I I I think we could talk for two more hours. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I'll just wrap wrap this thanks, up thanks. on on one little question. It's more for yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, are you now? I understand the triterpenes. The triterpenes in reishi is usually this is what we're measuring for to understand its potency. Do they have that equipment in Thailand? Are we a- able to measure for, let's say, if you took your reishi product, what percentage of triterpenes is in this? Terapentin, terapentin, right? A tri- I, like tri- ter- tri- t- yeah. tri- 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 yes. Why is it bitter? It's because of terapentin. Mm. Why I try the wild one in, Sing- in Singapore is because I want to find out, is it bitter? When it's not bitter, the rishi is missing out the most important compound, which is terapicinin. Mm. And we do send this to the lab, and they give us the percentage range of terapicinin, polysaccharide, adonisinin. Uh, if you want to do targeted lab tests, you can. Let them identify it for In you. Thailand, you can In do Thailand, that. In Thailand. Okay, do I need to look yeah, into you that. Can, you can do that. Yeah, I've tried right. to go down, uh, reaching out in Bangkok, right. but sometimes, you know. They do that in Bangkok. Sometimes mm. Thailand, when you don't speak the language, <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> it's, Thailand, sometimes you send a message online and then like eight weeks later, hello, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> totally <laughs> forgot. Um, yeah, because we're doing our, our product as well is we're going to be doing. Yeah, great we're product. Focus, yeah. yeah, we're focusing on um, on the beta glucans for a lot of these products. Yes, yes. Just because yes, we don't want any starch and any of that stuff involved. Right. We want you taking the good stuff. I think we'll get you back on for and, another episode and. so we can go a bit deeper. Right. Let us know in the comments. Uh, we'll bring Liam back on. You can have, ask him questions because I don't even think we scratched the surface. And as a mushroom nerd like myself, I could go for another two, three hours. But it's better maybe we spread them out over a few months. So if you're able to come back in a couple Definitely. months or when you're back, let's do it again. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've covered pretty much everything here. Um, now, 
I need to stop saying um. I've noticed I said it too much. <laughs> I don't know why. I think because I'm thirsty. Uh, just before we wrap this up, I'm going to shoot this uh, back to this camera here for Liam. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, perfect. And if you just stare directly down into the souls of all those mushroom lovers and just let them know where they can find you in Phuket and a little bit maybe about your uh, social media as well so they know how to connect to you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Brendan. Yeah. Hi everyone, uh, Mushroom World Phuket is located at Chao Long, Soi Kum Yang, and it's just beside uh, PTT, uh, uh, the, and that is the soil that you can visit us. We do have uh, farm tours, and you can harvest your uh, lion's mane where we can cook right in front of you. It has a, a fungi based uh, burger, and you can have a go at our lion's mane kombucha, rishi kombucha. And even our signature drink, Rishi World Coffee. And if you like bitterness, we will brew you a light, uh, Rishi Pure Harvest from Farm to Table Rishi drink. So hope to see you there. And please do visit us when you are in Phuket. And the, the Instagram handle, it's at uh, Mushroom World SG. SG, Mushroom uh, World SG, SG for, well, Singapore, I guess. Right. Uh, and so you'll be doing your farm there as well. I think there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out of this. Definitely. Definitely. So we'll, we'll have Liam back again. Let us know in the comments more questions. We barely scratched the surface. There's going to be so much more to go over. Do not forget to like and subscribe. This is all free content. We want to produce it for you guys in Thailand. We're bringing on a diverse variety, huge range of guests uh, you can also let us know if there's anyone in particular you want to come and see on the show. I'm planning to do some fun stuff. We might add a co-host and have a little fun. I actually might just stop hosting for one episode. So we're going to leave. I'm going to put that out there probably in a couple weeks. We're going to somehow have a mechanism where a host will come on, replace me. I might sit there on the side. You can bring your own guest on and you guys can have your own fun on my podcast and we'll promote it. Uh, we're here on the island to promote businesses, to build awareness, to build brands. Uh, this is not my core business. I'm just having fun. I'm rambling again. And subscribe. Yeah.